When were you born, Paul? 1946. I was born in Hatton Hospital over. You grew up where? Right here? Yeah. Uh, I grew up on uh, Wolf Creek over across the hill. That's Alpha Holler down near the black top turn to the right. That's that's where I grew up at. You had uh, mom and dad? Yeah. Yeah, they they both passed away, you know. I, uh, my dad my dad worked in the coal mines when we was growing up as teenagers. We tend the big corn, a whole side of a mountain out of corn, you know, and we had to have a milk cow. We had milk cows, chickens, hogs. Back then, if you didn't raise what you eat, you would starve almost. And my dad worked in the mines for a, a dollar an hour. He made $40, $40 a week in the coal mines. That's for, I mean, uh, for eight hours. Uh, eight hours a day, you got a dollar an hour. And, uh, and we'd take care of... Uh, Everything else when those kids we got up big enough, you know. They uh we tend a big garden and raise a lot of vegetables and uh we'd raise that corn, feeding corn for hogs and chickens, you know, we raise our own corn. And uh and daddy worked in the mines and we we fared good, but if you didn't raise it you didn't eat, by gosh back then. You couldn't get a whole nothing to eat. My daddy worked in the mines right down. He'd catch a ride down the road here about four miles. He'd cross over to where we lived at. And he brought a 50 pound handle of lard for $2.50 back then now. $2.50. This is the truth now. This ain't just a bear tail. And he'd put it on his back and carry it across the mountain. One side, one side of the mountain to the other, and, and pack it all the way home after he'd worked the shift work on the ground, you know, mining. And we we got along good, but now back then, if you didn't raise it, you, well, you could, everything was cheap, but you couldn't get a hold no money. Couldn't hardly get a hold no money back then. You have electricity back then? How, how old were you when you got electricity? Well, I was, I was about 15. Yeah, yeah, we had a, yeah, I'd use coal oil lamps. Yeah. And uh, we got along good. It, it, till you get used to them, like you feel like you're in the dark all the time. You don't put much light in there, just a, a dim light, but enough to see to get around in and eat and your bed clothing. Go to bed. How far did you go to school? I just got a chance to go to fifth grade. I'm telling you, just like I said, back then, you we had nine teachers, one one uh, uh, semester, you know, out of nine years, uh, months, you know, they teach, you know, out of the year. And we had nine teachers one time. Up. Some of them wouldn't teach a week. They'd let, they would, wouldn't come back. And... You didn't have much of a chance to get education now like you do now. No. Mm -mm. So it, it, but now, after fifth grade, you went where? What do you do? Start working? Yeah. Yeah, I, I went to working in the mines when I was 17 years old. And we loaded it with a shovel, with a big shovel. And we loaded 60 tons, uh, 30 tons to each man. They doubled us up. They had a big old broad car that went under it low hang of coal and uh they'd push it back in there where the coal pile they cut it with a with a machine it had big old bits and it cut out under that coal and uh they cut it and shoot it for us of a night and a day shift would come in and load it out and we would load 60 ton between two two men in eight hours and we got 1950 for doing that so a piece a day. Yeah, yeah, a day. Yep, yep. And then, then they went to Joyce, what's called a, a miner that loads it. You know, that Rob Electricity had their big old. They call them digging arms. Would just scoop that coal right up on that conveyor. That uh, Joy had a bit up big old conveyor. 
run to one end of the, well, the tail, they call it the tail part, you know, it's about uh, 12, 15 foot long and they'd back a, a buggy right up under it. This is underground? Yeah, underground, yeah. And uh, load it that way. And hip side how they would just rake it in on the head of that loader on that conveyor and they'd take it right back in them cars and they'd haul it outside and dump it into the temple. But, so when you were a young man, were there options for you? Other other things you could have done with no, your life? No, no, you couldn't. You couldn't make no money and I didn't have no education. When you, you know, you have to have so much education to, uh, now to get anything, John, you know. It's different, everything's different, ain't it? But uh, just, I had the skill and the, mind, and the willing mind, so I never, I never did dread work. I don't right now. I bet I'm doing something every day, going, that's what keeps me going. Let me tell you something there. When you sit down, you'll go down. On the average, when you get age on you, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Stop moving. Not moving, not moving. Use it or lose it. And I sure appreciate the Lord and the shape I'm in right now. You know about my breathing. Never, that, that heart doctor couldn't believe, couldn't believe it. Over Adam Montsey, over at Hazard, over my heart doctor. What about your lungs? How, how many years did you work in the mines? Worked 20. He said, say they run, he run the test on me. They do it every so often about my heart and lungs. And I had to go where five, four, five different times for my, my insurance would cover it, you know. And uh, he, he said, your, he said, your lungs is good right along with your heart. That ain't been about six months ago. And uh, I go to him every three or four months, you know, just to visit. And uh, he he couldn't couldn't believe my lungs was that way they was me being that dust. I'd come out there, I'd pull clogs of dirt, uh, coal dust where it caked in my nose that long right there. I'm telling you now, he'd start out and he'd just keep coming. I bet you now they'd be as long as your finger, you know. You didn't stop them up solid, but they, they'd get come out of clod like that. Where, where I breathed as much and never did get it on my lungs. Ain't that some? I breathed it in my nose. That must have been, I'll say, my lungs. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, I've, I've always been a good person. I've got more friends you wouldn't believe. Everybody that knows me. I know how to talk to people and I know when to not to talk. <laughs> <laughs> who to talk to. You can say a word to some people and they'll just... Uh, have, have you traveled? Have you been around the country? No. No, I... How far uh, have you Ohio is about the first I've been I, uh, up there in Dayton. I got some people lived up there back then. It's been a long time ago. It's sure been 30 years ago. My cousin, uh, he he had a sister lived up there and I went, he wanted me to go up there with him. And here comes snow while we was up there of old. It blocked people's driveways where they couldn't get out get out of their driveways, and, and they come. You go to them driveways, and they they'd be glad to get somebody to shovel them out. And we'd shovel them driveways out. They give us ten or fifteen dollars. You know that's a whole lot of money back then. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't get back on the main road out of their driveway from their house. You know, and we don't have no winters like we used to. Not now. Here lately, we ain't. <laughs> We didn't have much snow at all last winter, just a little here and yonder. Has life gotten harder or easier living here? Do what? Has life gotten harder or easier since you were a kid? Well, uh, it's, it's, say it's got easier. Things have changed a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, gosh, yeah, man. Yep, yep, yep. How, how are things changed? Better, better, uh, you can, get more uh more things to get food and this and that that you couldn't get back then or the coal mining has dried up so that's not around anymore well uh uh and that hurt that just happened for the last year or two the, they're hauling it right down this creek here and it's not telling where they're taking it they haul it from, you, you hear anybody say anything about blue diamond mm -hmm. across it's across the hill here they're hauling it from over there in them big trailers down this way uh, it's not telling where it's going. They say the, the the coal operator's getting three hundred dollars a ton for it in the temple right now. 
and hit, hit and every, see, I got a nephew works, works in the mines over at Leatherwood. They get about $200 a shift for eight hours. Mm -hmm. them, them coal miners is, yep. Yeah. You know, they're getting off the price they was for the coal. One of the miners told me they was getting uh, $300 a ton for it right now. End of temple now, and it, yeah. What do you make of the, the, the drug problem that's going on here? Well, I'll tell you, it's bad. It's bad, bad. That last house up there, that fellow's been doing it 25 years and, and he's never been arrested for it. He lives down the road down here now. About a couple of miles, a big old stone store, a big old building right in next to the road, level with the road there, about a couple of miles down there. He lives down there right now and selling it right down there right now. and. And there's some guy down there as a law man, law enforcer. He was a guy, guy more than there too. He's never said a word to him, but uh, he's got that that boy's uh, uh, niece, the one that's selling it. Her niece, the game warden, lives there. They've never, he's never said a word to them. And uh, it's it's everywhere now. This this is uh, Crystal Meth. Hi. Huh? This is Crystal Meth. I, ne I never did see one. Well, yeah, that's that's what they called it. Yeah, uh, it used to that you could. I have raised it in time. I have smoked some pot. But it 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 won't hurt you that way. I mean, and uh, they they last summer they run a helicopter eight times over top of his house back and forwards to right out here and back. They never did do that before. They don't find none. They spend an awful lot of money ever was. They find a bunch here again because nobody won't raise it no more. They know they hunt it so hard and they put people on meth. That's, that's what done it then right there. And you know it ain't that bad when, when they make it legal in so many states. It might be legal where you... Yeah, it's legal in California. That, that's what I'm saying. It, it, there are a whole bunch of states it's legal in. I've seen people smoke it and go about their business and, and not bother nobody and they eat it. What? But now that, that meth will go to killing them like flies. It's got so much stuff in it, I hear people talk about what to put in it. And when they get on it, they won't get off of it or can't get off of it once. It's addicting. You know, uh, Marijuana, they, you smoke a joint, maybe now not smoking on for a while, this and that, and you, you didn't crave it like that, but hey, there's something to that, to that meth. If it's got too bad a name, or, or people wouldn't even fool with it. What do you make of the future for the younger generation growing up here? I tell you what, I feel sorry for them myself. A young boys get you know, know, not know what they're doing, you know what, not knowing how bad it is, it's that's that's something the the feel bad about now i'm telling you for the young generation and they will get on it because it's just and they don't try to do nothing about it they could do more about it than what they they get a man up there and put him up 50 years if he's caught with it they go to change in their mind they might just quit a dealing with it that boy that man down here has went 25 years and ain't been caught they know him just the back, just like the bottom of my hand right there, that he's a doing it. Now it's it's something scary to think about for a young generation, ain't it? It it is. Do you, you have children? No, no, no. I've never been married. I've been this woman twenty years. <laughs> Way too long now. You never you never got married? No, no. Uh, I've been staying with Randall. Well, she. My my nephews, uh, is got uh, Brenda. Uh, I was married to Brenda's girl, and then she's got two kids. My nephew, and it's all family, you know. And they they think more of me than they do their own daddy. He he wasn't no cow, no matter if he was my nephew. The truth's the truth, you know what I'm saying. And uh, their mommy and her, she's smart as a tax son. She works online and makes all kinds of money. Got that right in her room. It's right in the room in there. Yes, sir.
You're, you're, you're happy here. You've lived here your whole oh, life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. You've lived a good life. Go, live a good life, yes, sir. And I'm a person, and I don't hold hate against nobody. Just, just, I mean, I'm satisfied anywhere I'm at. It don't make no difference where I'm at. I'm satisfied. And that, that is, that's what makes life so good. You're satisfied anywhere you're at. And you heard people say, I'm, I went somewhere and I was dissatisfied. <laughs> this and that, you know what I'm saying. And it's not about money. Yep. Because money is not. Money ain't all the are, but you got to have so much. No, ain't that true? I mean, so much anyhow. Uh, but now money ain't all the are. Nope. No, sir. Because this, this is one of the poorest parts of the country, but if you stay clear of the drugs, you, you know, everyone seems to be living a great life. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, people would raise it. I've raised some of it at times, some marijuana. But, and then here come that along like that. You know, I never, uh, I'd but uh, smokes a little now and then. It, it don't affect it. It don't affect you that way. Cigarettes will hurt you worse than anything. This backer that they're selling is, is giving people lung cancer and everything, according to the to the doctors. Yeah, well, alcohol is probably as destructive as anything. Well, yeah. You can buy that anywhere. Yeah, yeah, and it it makes people mean on alcohol. That, that people smoke that pot and they just peaceful as they can be. It does them all way different. But I've seen people think alcohol and they'd want to start fights with people that wasn't even bothering them or nothing. And and uh, I say they ain't too much to sell for alcohol now since that mess got out so strong. It's just scary to think about it now, I'm telling you. What the young generation's gonna get into when they, these teenage boys and things, they, you won't do to buddy up with many people. What, what were the best times of your life? What was, what was the best decade for you? Do what now? What was the best decade in your life? Your I'd, you, I'd say probably in the 20s, when I was in the 20 years old, <laughs> I had a little more life about it. <laughs> old, but you wouldn't believe, uh, as old as I am, how good my breathing is. I can walk these mountains. I take my time. I don't rush. I never smother. I just feel like a young man most of the time, but to be that I, be that old. You see people that old, just fairly a moving, all rolled over. A lot of, You're working every day. Yeah, yeah. Just as dear as the days comes that I'm doing something though. You know my grandpa lived to he was hundred and two. Really? His, his name was Felix Lewis. He was hundred and two. And when he's eighty five years old, he he raised his family on the farm, lived on the farm all the time. Back then and when he's eighty five years old, he's he go right back he had a big uh, field up there, about twenty acres cleared. Black dirt, richest dirt there was. And um that's all where where my house is at right now. That the full that holler right there, and you'd see him with his hoe hoeing corn. And him in his eighties, well, he lived to he's a hundred and two. So what was it? What was the hardest time of your life? Well, up uh, the hardest time. Well, I I never have had it too hard. You know. <laughs> Good answer. I can always, I can always find something to do, find something to eat. I like to fish. I go to Tennessee fishing, and, and I've done that for the last thirty years, cause the fishing is better down there than it is here. More fish, you see. Common Lake is big. Yeah, that's in Kentucky, you know, but it's hard to catch them. It's so big, you know, and I ain't got no boat. And we fish from the bank a lot, like that, and, and we catch more fish from the bank of sight. Yep, uh, I take Tyler with me there. Now them them kids there never has had no daddies. They feel more like I'm their daddy. Both of them do that right there, and that girl in there. You're his yeah. uncle. Yeah, yeah, yep. What's your favorite thing about Appalachia? Do what now? What's your favorite thing about Appalachia? Well, uh, it's it's the weather and it's. And the hunting and the fishing. What are you talk about the about the place? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. beautiful here. Yeah, it's 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 heck yeah, buddy. You won't find no beautiful place, will you? 
And then timber goes are getting green like that. And these creeks is clean too, what they used to be. That water just as clear as branch water. You can see the bottom of it and everywhere. Well, it's kind of low now too. But back when them strip jobs ever let everything go in it, that's that was hard on the, the wildlife, the, the fishing and everything. Uh, Do you have any regrets in your life? Huh? Do you have any regrets? No, no. No, I've always been the <laughs> happiest person. I talk to anybody. I, you wouldn't believe I've got friends everywhere. I you say people, they kind of a little shy, you know, about talking to people, strange people, <laughs> you know. I've, I've never been, been that way <laughs> from little up. What do you worry about? I don't worry. <laughs> I don't worry about nothing because everything ain't going to be all right. No you, didn't, you didn't take long to answer that. <laughs> uh, I know you used to worry about nothing because everything ain't going to be all right. No, I don't worry about nothing. You, know, you get upset a few on a few things, but it leaves you, you know, quick. Listen, it's a real bad thing, you know, like death out of family or. or but now, for just me now, I'm a. I'm a happy man. Your childhood was great, sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, big, how big a factor was that in your your life, how, how your life panned out? Well, I just didn't get to go to school. You know what I'm saying, we didn't have no school. Uh, but, you know, I had to quit too quick. Back then, where you, uh, uh, they was, you got, we had to walk to the school about a mile each way. Hit the road and walk. It ain't like that now. You know, they ride everywhere to go well, to school, you see. It's changed. Uh, you ever you ever wish maybe you'd grown grown up somewhere else? No. Some no. <laughs> no. No. I don't think you can find no better place. No. Nope. Uh and Paul, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Do what now? What's the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Well, you know, uh, it's liking people, got friends. That means a lot. You have good friends? Go, oh, God, yeah. I won't fool with, <laughs> just I won't talk to everybody. I'll speak if they don't say, say a word back. I can tell them when they grunt out where they don't want to talk or nothing. I just tell us, you know what I'm saying? Yep, I've got, I've got friends, good friends. I won't fool with. They say, I talk to everybody. Say, I know a lot of people. I can pretty well tell their actions when there's something matter with them, when they're not right. And it's about that way right now, buddy. All right, Paul. Thank you so much for sharing your story. You too. I wish you many more you wonderful too. years. Same to you. Thank you, Paul.